This is the new Peugeot Sport Engineered 508 station wagon. It is Peugeot's top of the range model with lots of power, with a massive boot and a design that looks awesome. Now, as a high performance hybrid model, this is both plug-in hybrid and self-charging. It's clever. It also has to represent Peugeot's top of the line design. And so it gets quite a few interesting features. Not least, the new badge is big and prominent here on this really quite detailed section of front grille. You've also got three strikes here for Peugeot Sport Engineered. And if you look at the lighting design here as well, it's really high tech stuff, matrix LEDs and some nice three stroke LEDs down the side, which are of course to insinuate a cat's claw or a lion's claw. Now there's no doubt in the intentions of this car when you look down at its 20 inch wheels or at least what's behind them because these are massive vented discs here with really bright luminous calipers as well. It certainly suggests this thing wants to go quick and it comes wrapped as standard in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires and they're really wide as well. Chunky, chunky, grippy stuff. And even at the back, you'll see we've got these little winglets here, which are aero pieces inspired by Peugeot's Le Mans efforts. And they're here adding muscle to what is otherwise actually quite a sensible tailgate. This is the estate shape. Looks pretty sensible, but still with these lights here, I think it looks great. As for the boot, which is obviously quite important given the thing is a station wagon slash estate. Well, Firstly, you've got this automatic tailgate and also it's a nice long boot. There is a noticeable lip here. It's metal, so it looks quite cool. But I mean, if you're loading heavy items, that might be a little bit annoying, but otherwise you've actually just got a lot of space here. And handily, you can hide your cables under the floor here. Although further forward is obviously where the batteries are. So you're not gonna get anything else under there. I've also spotted the massive focal subwoofer here, which is why you've got a great sound system. And just to emphasize, the length of the boot, we've got our cinch umbrella here. Look, it goes in completely, almost exactly actually the length of the boot. So it shows you the space you have. But if you want more, you can just handily pull these handles on either side here, and then it will fold the bench ahead down in a 40, 60 configuration. You've also got a ski hatch in the middle as well, if you just wanted to keep them up and poke something through them. So it's practical, usable. And of course, because it's a hybrid, it's not gonna be the biggest boot, but certainly you're gonna struggle to fill this thing unless you've got a lot of furniture. Right, now let's hit the road. But before we do that, make sure you're subscribed to our channel if you haven't already. And of course, when you're searching for your next car, check out cinch.co.uk or download our app. With a 1.6 litre petrol engine up front, aided by an electric motor and an additional electric motor at the back, this handsome all-wheel drive 508 produces 360 horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque, which is a lot of muscle. But key to the car's appeal is its efficiency and Peugeot claims it can do 34 miles in pure electric mode or average a combined 156.9 miles per gallon. Impressive. Oh, and if you're wondering why our UK plated station wagon occasionally turns into a left hand drive car on the continent, it's because we're using some Peugeot supplied B-roll to fill the gaps after our day was cut short by a colossal rainstorm. So let's get straight to it. This is a very interesting car and it should be at over 50,000 pounds. This is basically Peugeot's benchmark machine. It is their top of the range car, especially in this station wagon body shape. Now that means it promises both performance, efficiency, and of course, space, lots and lots of room. But on the road, I can tell you, it doesn't feel that massive. It's quite easy to thread down a B road, Yes, it's long and I look in the mirror and I can see the rear window it is way out back, but I feel pretty comfortable driving this thing on narrow British tarmac. It does have quite a few mods. Peugeot Sport Engineer has tweaked this car quite substantially to give it its performance credentials. Not only does it have that high performance engine set up with the engine focusing its power at the front and then the electric stuff at the back, but also we've got a stiffer suspension set up as well. And you definitely feel it. The wheels are quite big on this car. And then on top of that, you've got a stiffer spring rate. And while it's not very, very harsh and not very, very stiff, if I just tread onto these cat size here, there is a noticeable thud through the floor of the car, through my seat as well. But actually overall, it seems to be well judged. It's kind of sporty, but not overly so. And obviously that does mean it handles pretty good as well. It definitely seems to resist body roll. It's really hunkered down. And the steering as well is quite nice and quick to respond. It's that classic thing though, where you're not actually getting that many messages. If you want to have steering feel and you want to have real communication with a car, you're still going to have to look to slightly more traditional performance oriented fast estates. 
I'm thinking BMW 5 Series estates, for example, where you get a lot more feedback. This doesn't give you the information through the wheel. The brakes are strong, but not much in the way of messages coming through that pedal either. Really, this is a slightly muted, slightly numbed car, but very quick, very effective, and lots of grip as well. Most enjoyable, of course, as well, is the fact that, yeah, this is an eight-speed automatic gearbox car, but actually it just feels really linear and smooth in its delivery of power, almost electric-like, because of the efficiency and effectiveness of the electric motors. Let's see how it handles though, shall we? I said it handles all right, it doesn't tip and lean into bends. It is raining now, the road is slippery, but if I just switch it across into its sport mode, now we've got both ends of the car, both powertrain and ends of the car working to their maximum for performance. If I put my foot down, there's a slight hesitation, but then the gearbox drops a couple of gears and it feels quick. You can also change down the gears manually with the paddles here. They're a bit plasticky for my liking. I wish they were a bit more interesting. They look great, but then you feel them and they're just a bit design and technology project stuff, you know? But anyway, they're there and it means you can manually change the gears up and down and it's quick to respond, I have to say. And there's a nice surge of electric torque when you shift up through the gears as well. Let's see how it feels from a standing start, shall we? And then I'll take the corner ahead with some enthusiasm. Right, flip the floor. Oh, quick. And 60. So that is pretty quick off the line. Not rapid, not pushing your head off your neck sort of stuff, but it feels enjoyable. And that's what matters about this car. I don't think it wants to be a super estate. It just wants to be an estate that can put a smile on your face now and then. There are, of course, other drive modes as well. If I click it down into comfort, then everything just slows down, the accelerator responds more relaxed. And thanks to the standard fit adaptive dampers, the suspension can also soften off in comfort mode, making it genuinely comfortable on bumpy British tarmac. If I click it down into electric mode, now Peugeot claims you get 41 miles of fully electric mileage in this car. We're at 71% battery and it's showing 21 miles of electric range on the dash. Now, if I put my foot down in electric mode, it's quick enough. I mean, that is nippy. There's definitely going to be capable of keeping up with traffic, definitely going to get you through town with no issues whatsoever. And I know this setup really well in a slightly lower powered form because it's shared with the Vauxhall Astra, which is a sister car from a sister brand of the parent group. And that's a much more sensible car. But I know the electric powertrain in that works really well in town. So I suspect this will do as well. Even though I'm out in the country now, I know from that experience that you can keep up with busy traffic. Here, if I stick it into four-wheel drive mode now where we just get maximum from both ends again. All right, let's see what it's like with a bit of load in this wet corner. Yeah, and actually it does do something which is quite nice, which is it feels like it sort of pulls you into the corner as well if you accelerate into the bend and around the bend as well. There's a real sense of something there using the power of both ends of this car to tug you into the bend. One thing I will say is I'm not a massive fan of how heavy the steering gets in sport mode because you don't get any more feel with the weight of the steering. I wish I could soften the steering back and make it slightly lighter, but yet yeah, still have the performance of the engine at its maximum. I just feel like you don't gain anything from the added weight, all you gain is added effort. Also, this iCockpit setup is really, really impressive and this is a lovely interior. It, feel, it feels very different to the rivals and that's a massive plus point, I think. People are gonna get in this and think, this doesn't feel like any of the rivals, therefore I'm interested. But there is still one thing that I must say, and I know a lot of people are probably tired of me saying this, especially Peugeot owners who go, oh, you're just sitting in the wrong position. I'm sat low in the car how I like to be. Some people like to be higher and I accept that, but I like to be low. But I've got the steering wheel lower than I want it to be. I would prefer the wheel to be slightly higher up and for me to be driving in what I would feel like a more of a sports car position. But I have to have the steering wheel lower than I want it to be so I can see the graphics ahead of me. There are really cool graphics on this screen, so I want to see them. But unfortunately for me, it means the steering wheel, which is small and nice and compact, feels very sporty, looks good itself. But yeah, you drive with your hands a bit low. That being said, it is definitely a comfortable place to sit. These seats, while they're quite firm, they look great. And they're also really comfortable. They just support you in all the right places. And standard fit on this car you get massage function as well. There's multiple versions of that and you can cycle through the menus and adjust which part of your back you want massage. And it's really lovely. It's a very nice system. I've only just switched it off now because it was a little bit distracting really. You would have had me going, ooh, quite a lot in the video. 
Now this interior is definitely worth a closer look because it's really very impressive. As I said, it's very different to other car interiors. And it's also got some really unique features that are very Peugeot indeed. Now, firstly, everything sort of insinuates claws. There are like three strikes here for the Peugeot Sport Engineered brand, but of course that also is supposed to represent three claws, I think, for an animal. And elsewhere you see that as well. You've got these sort of claw buttons over here. Firstly, they're buttons, so they're shortcuts. So if you don't like fiddling with the infotainment system, you've got some physical shortcuts, which are a big win in my books. And you've also got this interesting thing where if you get your three fingers and you go like that, it also takes you back to the home screen. So the shortcut to go back to the home screen is three fingers on the screen like a claw. There is also a home button down here, but that's less fun, isn't it? Uh, elsewhere, I'm recognizing a lot of stuff from other products in the Stellantis group. So that means Vauxhall, for example. I definitely see this new switch gear down here is all shared with models like the Vauxhall Astra. Same with the gear selector buttons there, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think they look okay. Elsewhere though, it is definitely very Peugeot. This steering wheel, for example, is very much their small steering wheel, flat top, flat bottom, needs the flat top so that you can see the digital screen ahead of you here. As I said, the display itself is really nice. You can scroll through different displays so you can have it showing, for example, your navigation, which is really useful, or you can have it even set to minimum. If you think there's too much information there, you can just have it showing your speed and the most basic info, which is a nice design feature. Seats I mentioned, very comfortable. They look great. I love the cross stitching. And then practically speaking, there's actually a decent amount of storage space. You've got some room up here for some stuff in there two cup holders here, which we've used, and also a nice deep storage section down here as well with two plugs as well. So when you use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you plug your phone in through there and it will be charging while displaying on the screen, which is nice. Decent door pockets as well. And I think the space in the back isn't too bad as well. This is the station wagon after all. Now in the back of the car, it's actually still a very nice place to be. It feels a bit cozier because you haven't got this extended sunroof to come all the way back. It only comes up to halfway along the car's roof. So some people might think, oh, it's a bit dark in here, but I quite like it. It's because the black headlining is quite nice actually. And you've still got these cool design details around you that feel very Peugeot. In terms of space, well, the seats are comfortable. I love the cushioning they've got in it. It's firm, supportive, and just nice. Good leg room, knee room's good. I've got this seat set how I like it, which is probably not the most practical setting if you've got people in the back, but I've got good space for my knees and I can tuck my feet under the seat ahead of me, despite it being as low as it will go. So I am very comfortable actually. It's definitely not the most spacious cabin and I think there might be a Skoda or two to make this one look a bit narrow, but actually it's very comfortable indeed. And the middle seat I can see is quite wide. So I'll just jump over in that and see. Firstly, I just tap my head on the roof here because you sit a bit higher, so it is noticeably more cramped. I feel like I'm looking down on everyone else. And that's because this obviously being a hybrid, there is still stuff between front and rear of the car. And so there is a small tunnel in the floor here. So my feet have to sit either side of it. So it's not the most spacious when it comes to five seating, although I still am relatively comfortable on this nice cushioning. But yeah, if you're carrying two passengers either side of me, it's gonna be a bit snug if they're adults. You do though, thankfully get two USB ports down here and two separate vents as well. So at least everyone can be kept charged and cooled or heated. So, the 508 in this Peugeot Sport engineered form is actually a very impressive car. I'm a massive fan of the interior. As I said, I love the design of this thing. I think many buyers are gonna be drawn to it purely for its looks and fair play. And with that big boot at the back of it, of course, it's very usable as well. I have to say, of course, when it comes to actual driving dynamics and getting the feel and the pleasure of driving, something like a 5 Series with a sporty engine from BMW is probably gonna to appeal to buyers a little bit more. But for everyone else who just wants a car that feels high tech, high quality and is packed full of equipment. Oh, and yeah, let me mention the looks again, which makes you feel great because you're driving something with this design. Well, yeah, this thing is a really, really strong car. What do you think though? Let us know in the comments below. If you like it, do you think this is better than the alternatives, especially those from Germany, of which there are many? Let us know. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review. See you soon.